for your discussion. My next uh, welcome, uh, sir, uh, to this uh, <laughs> discussion, panel discussion. Uh, my next question to you, Mr. Barney. Uh, what role do NGOs play in addressing the health issues of women and to what extent women are benefited from such a scenario? Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, may I apologize because I used to talk to you. Yes, yes, I know. And, uh, <laughs> I have no clue uh, as to what the discussion happened so far. So the, my uh, answer would be on the basis of some of the work that I have done. Okay. Uh, you know, it's your on the gender uh, aspect of this thing. So uh, uh, I'm an economist, so we were working on this NFHS data. Uh, and and uh, maybe I can share some experience from that data. Uh, and we were looking at this whole uh, concept of uh, open defecation in India, because health and open defecation are kind of related to one another. So uh, some of the thing that we've uh, found, and this is already published in Empirical Economics, is uh, in spite of the government building toilets uh, in terms of uh, the demand for toilets uh, in comparison to other consumer durables. Uh, so we look into, because if you look into the NFHS data, you will find that there are 21 different consumer durables like uh, telephone uh, cycles, uh, then uh, TV, uh, televisions, uh, radio sets, uh, so on and so forth, right? And what we found was, in spite of uh, the government building toilets, in terms of priority, uh, basically we ran a logistic regression. In terms of priority, what we found was the toilet is getting a much lower uh, rank, which is basically saying that uh, just uh, by intervening, by uh, building more toilets is not going to help. Now here, what we found again quite interestingly is for the household where you have women as the head of household, because if you're looking into uh, the state of Kerala, or for that matter, the Northeastern states, uh, you have the woman who actually running the household, you know, as compared to uh, some of the patriarchal states, uh, in particular, UP, Haryana, and the entire Jharkhand Belt. What we found is in terms of women empowerment, in terms of, uh, the health aspect, health data, uh, in terms of the outcome of infant mortality and stuff like that, it is much lesser uh, in the states. Uh, uh, the in, in 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 the states where it's a uh, it's a patriarchal society, but for the states where it's a matriarchal society, the health outcome or the results are much better compared to, which is basically saying uh, is uh, if I control for uh, the who is uh, heading the household you will find that in terms of outcome variable uh, for the southern states and the northeastern states, for the women, uh, it is much better compared to the northern states. So that is one point that we found out. The second point what we found was, we also control for the level of literacy uh, among the women. And uh, uh, we looked into the number of uh, women who have crossed uh, 10 level exam, 10 plus two, and uh, graduate and postgraduate. And uh, interestingly, uh, the more uh, the study a woman does, the better is the not only the health outcome, because as you know that health, income, and uh, education, these are three important components of development, and these three are interrelated to one another. And we in fact found that for the household where the women are more educated, or the women who are more empowered, they have better outcome in terms of health. Uh, so that is another important finding from our study. We also control for the religion, and this is also quite important. And we found that the, typically the Muslim household, they're the, uh, the indicators, the health indicators are much better. So when we actually uh, dig a little bit deeper, what we found that uh, the Muslim has the uh, concept of uh, give, uh, or, uh, washing their hand five times a day, you know, and that in a way uh, has led to a better uh, health outcome among the Muslim families, you know. So that, that is another important finding from the study that we found that in terms of infant mortality rate, we found that the number of infant dying among the Muslim household are much less compared to uh, the non-Muslim household. So that is controlling for the religion. 
So these are the three important things that we found from our study. And this paper got published in Empirical Economics, which is an A-rated journal. And uh, without actually hearing much about the previous discussion, I think it's not uh, wise on my behalf to comment. But this is some of the things uh, which came out from our study. And uh, regarding the NGO, you mentioned about the NGO. Uh, I, at some point of time, was working with Rajiv Gandhi Foundation. And uh, there I have had the opportunity of visiting or doing some field visit and trying to see that whether the money which has been given uh, are being used properly. You know, So there also, uh, what happened is um, when we talked to some of the district magistrate or uh, some of the gram panchayat, let's say in a given gram or in a village, you need more, the necessity of having a more primary healthcare is more compared to, let's say, having a primary education center. But because the government is giving money, which is uh, channeled towards a particular type of intervention, uh, even so, for instance, in a particular village, we found that the district magistrate was saying that is it, it's more important, they will benefit more by opening a primary healthcare. But the money which was given was actually for building a primary school, you know. So this kind of thing, uh, I think, uh, if you give the flexibility in terms of using the money in terms of what is being more necessitated, I, I think it would make much difference at the ground level compared to uh, what we see otherwise. So that is one small observation, uh, having worked with few NGOs, and the NGOs were basically telling us that, uh, look, we can't go beyond what the government is asking us to do, because our job is to look into the delivery aspect of it. But whether the money will go for education or for cutting ponds or rainwater harvesting or for that matter, building more primary health care is something which is beyond our control. You know, So therefore, um, I think uh, in terms of uh, delivery, it makes sense uh, from the NGO perspective. But in terms of uh, making real difference on the ground, what makes sense is can we allow a little bit more flexibility when it comes to usage of funds? That would be my short answer. Thank you so much, Mr. Banik. Really, uh, you have raised very good point that the funds should be flexible to use in the fields. And uh, the another thing uh, you have said that health is directly related with the education of the women. Yes, it, it's true. You have discussed in a very uh, good manner. And another thing is that the matriarchal society is uh, doing better in comparison to the patriarchal society. Yes, because uh, these things are really very, very good and informative for us. So thank you so much, Mr. Banik. My next question is from Ms. Ms. Uh, Minakshi uh, Gupta to you. That uh, what are the major health issues among most marginalized sections of women like sex workers, inmates, etc.? Thank you. Uh, great that you asked this question about the most uh, vulnerable uh, women. And uh, we at Goons, we've, we've been trying to understand, you know, uh, even before COVID, uh, that, and, and I'll, uh, my, my uh, analogy or my work uh, or my comments will come from the space of working on menstrual health, but I guess it is an indicator of larger uh, aspects of health, women's health. Uh, so going back to my story about how we've come to work on menstrual health, and uh, when we were working, we realized that there were these, uh, again, uh, coming from ground up stories, uh, things we were seeing on the ground. Some stories I'll share. Uh, so one very big segment of women whose menstrual uh, health and hygiene issues have as yet not made it to the mapping are disabled women. So one story, and, and this was, we were working with uh, Anandwan, the, the, uh, the ground of uh, uh, the, uh, the leprosy work which has come up out there. 
and there they also had a group of women who were blind right and it was a shock to understand that a blind woman or a blind young girl when she first menstruates she has no way of knowing that she has started to menstruate or her clothes are are uh, you know there's some stain on it or anything like that or simple thing like for a blind woman to know which side of the pad and how it has to be put in now this small thing it has such a such a basic connection with how she is supposed to deal with her menstrual hygiene or women who are uh, who have some uh, mental uh, health disability now there were cases and stories and these this is all published stories which you can access uh, from the net that that many families who have daughters for example who are having a mental health issue uh they tend to take out get their daughters uh, uterus taken out before they start or around the time they would start menstruating because they they it's very the 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 girl the daughter is very vulnerable to any kind of abuse and she would not know how to report it or she would not know how to deal it and even otherwise to for her to be able to deal with the menstruation is a bit of a inconvenience or a bit of a issue which the parents given all other circumstances that they may have they may be poor they may, may be having not enough support whatever and then there are these tribal women uh, sorry migrant women who travel all across the country there are stories which i'm sure many of you might have read that there were stories being reported about uh, how these women working in these sugarcane uh, crop uh, cutting the contractors out there were actually actively motivating them to take out their uterus because every month 5 days they would lose their uh, daily wage because they were menstruating and they couldn't work so women had to actually make those choices about their health based on the economic aspect why i'm sharing these very you know sort of may seem a little scattered but there are these voices of women about their menstru menstruation and menstrual health which are not even included in the menstrual men uh, menstrual health aspect as yet forget about the larger landscape of health so it's that kind of a journey that we have to take up and the other aspect i'd, I'd like to mention is about how we we've seen a lot of data being talked about today and yesterday also but i think we need to make those connections which are you know which i for example for menstrual health are missing right now the connection between cervical cancer the high rate of cervical cancer in this country and the the, the very bad status of menstrual health of women or the economic uh, poverty of women connected to their menstruation i don't know there is no data so the research and and the indicators that we are talking about i think we need to have more uh, fund more resource being put into listening to women and really asking them those questions about their health which they have somehow somewhere taken it as a you know this is part of my life this is how it is so making those connections with the data that we have i think is it's a very important task and we need to go back to these very vulnerable pockets of women and i think you know if if the larger infrastructure and the thinking about health does include these small needles which are bothering women like menstruation that i mentioned then we'll probably be able to bring in those things in the like like the simple thing about menstruation that i'm sure every woman out here has heard at some point whether from a mother or from a doctor that ye hota hai aisa hota hai you know pet mein dard ho raha hai hota hai how is a woman supposed to figure out that you know where is it that that threshold of ye hota hai se aage baat badhegi 
for her to actually think this is an urgent matter i need to go to the doctor and show it's not it's not even included as something which is there and believe me when i talk about menstruation as a basic issue it is something not just about women who are not like us this is something about women like us in the zoo how many of us actually go and ask a chemist that which pad is good for my skin which pad does not have chemicals which will bother it's the most intimate product but we don't ask those questions we don't know what goes into our pads we don't know what is what is the thing which is good for my skin or not we don't i mean we are educated women we're not asking because it's not there in our mapping of our health that we are including menstruation so i just stop here i hope you thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you so much uh, uh, for your insights and about the menstruation uh, uh, problems of menstruation and all uh, i just want to say when we are talking about the sex workers or the marginalized population and the people uh, and the women those are living in uh, jail or inmates of women the most important thing that we uh, really we are not going to understand the mental situation of these women because i have worked in the brothel area then i have worked in, in the jail also when i have met those uh, people tab wahan ja ke nikal kar aata hai ki wo kis mental state se guzar rahi hain unko ek choti choti when if the people uh, if the women is living in uh, jail and she is not having a proper uh, uh, breakfast proper lunch and proper dinner and she is pregnant so what she can do at that time aur unko wahan pe kaam bhi karwaya jata hai itna zyada struggle hai ki agar hum ja ke unse poochte hain to unke issues bilkul different hain aur unse ye kaha jata hai ki ya to wo apne ghar se paisa manga ke hame de jisse ki wo un sari cheezon se unko chutti di ja sake unka jo ek मशक्कत करके एक चीज है उससे उनको रिलीफ दिया जा सके अदरवाइज जो एकदम और ज्यादा बढ़ जाती है नॉर्मल पॉपुलेशन से अगर हम हट के देखते हैं तो वहां पे ये वर्लेबिलिटी हमें और ज्यादा जाती नजर आती है एंड वेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दैक्स वर्कर्स एंड वेन आई वर्ड एंड वेन आई वॉज डिस्कसिंग विद्स वर्कर तो उनका कहना है कि हमारे बारे में सोचता ही कौन है हमारे बारे में सोचता ही कौन है अगर हमारे यहाँ कोई प्रेग्नेंट हो गया तो वो उसको तो सोसाइटी एक्सेप्ट ही नहीं करने जा रही है और हेल्थ कैम्प की कोई फैसिलिटी नहीं होती बहुत सारे मैंने एन के साथ काम किया था नेको के साथ काम किया था कुछ हेल्थ कैंप्स को वहां पे लगवा देते थे तो वहां उनको वो फ्री मेडिसिन एकदम उनको लगता था कोई तो हमारे पास आया कोई तो नॉर्मल पॉपुलेशन से हमारे पास आया जिससे हमारे बारे में भी सोचा so they are uh, actually they are uh, going and they are uh, thinking ki what what is the we actually we cannot understand the vulnerability those uh, those are present over there in the brothel area as well in the chain ye ek bahut bada issue hai jo ki hum address hi nahi karna chahte aur address kar bhi nahi pate hain jab tak aap unke sath ja ke judenge nahi aur judna unke sath itna aasan nahi hai क्या किया जा सकता है क्योंकि जो हेल्थ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है वो बहुत बड़ा इशू है उसमें बहुत सारे रिसोर्सेज जाएंगे वन ऑफ दिंग्स डेट वी रियलाइज वॉज की खाली आप जाके बात कर लें और कहें कि आपको ऐसा करना चाहिए चाहिए तो बहुत कुछ Uh, आप किसी महिला से कहें कि आपको नहाना चाहिए आपको साफ सफाई रखनी चाहिए बट मोस्ट टाइम्स दैट वुमन कैन टर्न अराउंड टेल यू कि भाई अच्छा नहाना तो चाहिए आप बता रहे हैं मुझे बट साबुन कहाँ है पानी कहाँ है एक एक्स्ट्रा कपड़ा कहाँ है वो वो जो बेसिक जो मिसिंग है वो कहाँ है तो वी फाउंड द आंसर इन मोबलाइजिंग वुमेन जो जो गूंज ने जो चुप्पी तोड़ो बैठक की बात की जो हम हजारों की तादाद में महिलाओं के साथ करते हैं द अदर आस्पेक्ट विच वी इंट्रोड्यूस इज कि महिलाएं खुद मोबलाइज हो अपने विषयों पे काम करके कुछ बदलने के लिए बिकॉज वी सॉ द हेल्थ और द मेंस्ट्रल हेल्थ एज अ 
एज अ काइंड ऑफ एन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर वुमेन टू सर ऑफ से कि भाई हमारा मसला है सो दे इन 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 विलेजेस अक्रॉस इंडिया वुमेन आइडेंटिफाई देयर ओन इशू कि हमारा कौन सा इशू है जैसे पानी नहीं है या प्राइवेट स्पेस नहीं है तो वी सेड अच्छा चलिए अब क्या करें आप प्राइवेट स्पेस बनाते हैं और जो भी है उससे बनाते हैं तो बहुत बार तो वो लिटरली पत्ते या वो लेके बनाते हैं कोई छोटा सा एरिया लेके वहां पे एक प्राइवेट स्पेस उन्होंने बंद जगह बनाई तो बहुत सारे लोग हमसे कहते हैं कि भाई ये क्या सोल्यूशन हुआ ये तो बहुत ही बेसिक है इसे तो कल मतलब एक महीने में खत्म हो जाएगा तो हम कहते हैं कि नहीं बात बात उस फिजिकली कैसे बना है उसकी नहीं है बात यह है कि एक महिला ने या एक ग्रुप ऑफ वुमेन ने अपने लिए 